Hello and welcome to Eye on the Money, the television show that gives you insights into how to improve your financial well-being as well as make your money work for you. I'm Ingrid, I'm Ingrid Nantege. Now, different businesses have different goals and take different routes to fulfill those goals. These routes constitute the business strategies of these businesses. While it's easy to understand the definition of a business strategy, sometimes it's an uphill task to form and execute a successful one. Joining me in studio to discuss how to develop a business strategy and the role it plays in the success of your business is financial and research consultant Kevin Gikonyo Moriyuki. Second time on the show, you're very welcome, Kevin. Thank you. We're always very happy to have you here. Thank you. Now, Kevin, even as we sit here, talk to people about why they should have a business strategy. Some of them might not even understand what this is. So what is it? What's a business strategy? It's a master plan, um, which you normally craft at the point of uh, realization that you actually need to achieve one of the goals that you actually desire. So like any other plan, a uh, business strategy is actually has to be smart. Mm -hmm. uh, by smart, that is very specific. It has to be uh, measurable. It has to be actionable and also realistic and time-bound. So you cannot uh, just say, I want to do a strategy, and you sit back on it, and you say, um, I'll let the course take its own yeah, in terms of time. So you, they have to be smart objectives for you to be able to actually uh, come up with a very effective business uh, strategy. Uh, of course, there is a middle, uh, there is a short term, mm -hmm. there is a middle, and there is a long term. Right. Uh, mid, um, a short term is not usually advisable, or it's usually a red flag for most businesses, because it means you are not planning adequately in yes. advance. So it's a red flag for most businesses. So most business strategies should actually be uh, mid-term to long term. That's between three to five years, or even ten years, now and talk about long term. So uh, in itself, it's coined from a Greek word called strategia, mm -hmm. which was uh, uh, normally associated with the military, and uh, mostly military and politics back in the days. And with time, after 1960, it was actually now uh, taken into the business context, that now people realize businesses can actually be put on a strategic plan to be able to meet a certain end goal, mm -hmm. not just the military or the politi uh, politic kind of uh, business or uh, also intricacies of politics or even military. Mm -hmm. So that's how it coined and how it's ma it's ma it matured to actually what it is right now. But Kevin, yes. why is it so important? I mean, besides the fact that you've mentioned that it helps an organization meet a certain target or a certain goal, away from that, why should I consider having it as an entrepreneur, as a business owner? Why should I even go through the trouble, the work of, you know, sitting down, coming up with a strategy? Why? Why should I do this? Uh, like Benjamin Franklin said, eh, if you do not plan, you're actually planning to fail. Right. Uh, and that is been tested. Like whichever kind of uh, action that you want to take, uh, if it's studying, you still uh, need to make a plan. If it is uh, going to do uh, or to be a sporting legend, you have to have a plan that you wake up every day and actually do uh, particular exercises. Mm -hmm. So any facet on, of life has actually uh, has an aspect of planning which in itself now brings that aspect that you must plan to be able to be able to achieve some desired goals. So for businesses, you need to do this because uh, most of the time you want to grow your bottom line, which is your profits. You either want to uh, reduce your costs, that's being, it could be one of the goals that you're actually are planning to actually achieve. Mm -hmm. The other one you want to um, probably um, have a certain culture within a, a, an organization that realize you need a certain direction in a business. So that in itself is also a strategy. Mm -hmm. There's also where you want to perfect uh, a quality of a product. And you actually uh, purpose to actually uh, uh, be able to improve a particular product to a point where it uh, reaches uh, optimal efficiency. There's also the part of uh, uh, te uh, environmental conservation because mm -hmm. those are issues that are very prevalent today and very uh, alive to most businesses. Some uh, organizations or investors will not actually put money if you are not actually conserving uh, the environment. Right. So you might uh, you might be forced to actually come up with that as part of a strategy to actually be able to uh, beat that desire goal that you are talking about. But I could yeah. argue yeah. that I'm an SME. I'm a small business. I mean, I'm the CEO. Mm. I have the finance guy. Yeah. I have the communication. Like I have a really lean team. I know exactly what I'm doing with my business. Why, my argument could be is why do I need it? Like from, so my question is, is it a preserve of those really, really big 
companies that have structures that have so much going on that have so much to align is it a preserve of just big organizations or does even a very small corner you know business need a business strategy who should come up with this that's a very good question for you to be able to come to that realization you do not need to be in a certain cadre of life or society because uh, like i had explained earlier any part of uh, you achieving a goal because we always want to aspire to something so you must have a plan to it and it is said that one of the richest place, places on earth is actually the graveyard mm. because most people die with their ideas with their dreams that they were supposed to actuate and they never did so which again forms and you see strategy it has to be put on paper it has to be it has to be actionable it has to be followed through now i'll give you an example mm. the, one of the fastest growing companies and actually in the world called air uh, bnb right um it was started in 2007 by just two people they were very they were living in san francisco in usa they were very uh, they were not able to make ends meet in other words they were not able to pay their rent so they sat back and said uh, there's a conference happening up in san francisco why don't we make the best out of it so right. what they did they put an air mattress an inflated one in one of the sitting rooms so his name was brian and the other one was uh, joe so they put it up and they said you know what we are going to charge and they made 80 dollars on the first night oh, wow. so it does not and you see that was in 2007 they started even with nothing yeah. just the rent room that they were, they were looking to actually uh, pay their rent right that was their immediate that's goal. all they that needed just to pay needed. rent just to pay rent and make ends meet right that's how that company started as we speak it is worth billions of dollars mm -hmm. And with time, they perfected, they put a website. Now it is, it is it's a very huge company. So as we speak, sometimes you may be in the thick of things and you realize, oh, I've been doing this, then I need to now move to the next level. Like now Airbnb, they decide now we are just doing this for making ends meet mm -hmm. at the immediate section, which of course it's a red section like I was talking about. Then now they sat back and said, by the way, you can actually earn from it. So they went back and planned and they got investors and by 2009 and 2012, they are doing a, they are breaking in a lot of money right. from it. So sometimes you could be in it, and then you, within itself, you re-engineer yourself okay. and decide now, okay, this was the short-term goal, but now let me strategize for a bigger, bigger cake. Kevin, you said something very yeah. important that I really want to pick your mind on. You said mm -hmm. a business strategy has to be put on paper, number one, mm -hmm. and secondly, it has to be actionable. So as an organization that has a business strategy, that's one part of the coin. Like, I've already fulfilled that. However, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how do I ensure that my employees are aligned with my business strategy? Because you've said it yourself. It has to be actionable. So how then do I make this happen? That's uh, also a very good question because you as a vision carrier, you could actually have a strategy in mind. But there are people who are within you that should be able to carry that dream. Uh, one of them is actually to have it uh, inculcated in your mission and vision mm -hmm. statement when you're forming the business so that uh, any time that a new employee or somebody is looking at your business, they know this is what it's all about. This is my strategy of how achieving this particular business. Uh, the other thing you could actually set uh, quarterly or even monthly or weekly targets depending on your kind of business. Mm. If it's high, high kind of traffic kind of business, you may need to do weekly, weekly strategies, eh? uh, weekly targets, sorry. Then you'd have these targets to be able to motivate this staff and know this is where we are supposed to reach. And once I put the target, then it keeps on a daily basis reminding this person or the employee that actually I'm supposed to attain that particular goal. Then you have the aspect of uh, having the senior managers buying into that particular strategy. Because once they do it, they are the ones who are going to now cascade it to the right. uh, junior employees. Uh, you could uh, actually have reward mechanisms where if now you achieve, uh, a, a, an employee achieves a section of that strat strategy, mm -hmm. you actually give them a reward. It could be bonus, it could right. be some uh, salary increment that could actually be a part of the back and say you actually uh, uh, helped us achieve our strategy. Uh, the other would be uh, that you need to have a buy-in from the staff themselves. Uh, not just to have the senior executives uh, carry that uh, strategy. So you need to have task force, like a committee or a champion for that particular strategy. That way they would know now I'm dealing with Ingrid and mm -hmm. she's a champion for that particular strategy. I mean, it's somebody I can relate to. Right. She can bounce it off me anytime and I feel uh, like it's, it, it, it has trickled down to 
uh, a point where I can relate with it, not just uh, top top down. Mm. We can actually be able to interrogate it on a on a, on a horizontal on a right. horizontal level. Yes. Right. yes. So when you say it should be as, as part of the vision and mission of the organization, so that employees leave it right from when they join, mm. does that then mean when coming up with the business strategy, this should happen right at that point when you conceive the idea that I want to start this business? Do you come up with it along the way? Is it something you do later? At what point does someone come up with a business strategy? Uh, the best kind of strategy is you do it before uh, conceptual or uh, before actualization of that particular business. Right. So you start with the conceptualization of an idea where within it, now you have to be able to interrogate mm -hmm. uh, this uh, business strategy that I have, mm -hmm. will it be able to see the light of the day? Um, is it something new in the market? Is it, uh, am I reinventing the wheel or is it just something that my next neighbor door is doing? And sometimes Kenyans have perfected this because you find somebody opening a kiosk, uh, they are selling soap, and you see they are making money and you want to do the same. Uh, not forgetting that actually you, actually, uh, that person could have planned very well right. to the point of entry and making that kiosk operational. So you, you need to actually find out if my next door neighbor is selling soap, could I probably sell something complimentary that would actually go along with the soap that they are selling, let's say the buckets now. So that way, you are able to have a, a, a bounce off from the ecosystem, a bounce off from the market itself, that you're able to, from that, inform to what you're going to do next. Mm -hmm. So once you conceptualize, you put it on paper. And once you put it on paper, of course, some people may not be able to do this. You may need experts, uh, right. people like us, mm -hmm. to actually do it. <laughs> so, <laughs> Add. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is the part I'm uh, trying to tell people. If it's not for you, right. just don't I'm try. Here. Don't yeah. try to do it. Right. Uh, it may need a, b a bit of technicalities to actually be able to understand some of these things. So it's actually a 12-point uh, plan that you, ne you need to actuate right. to be able to see uh, to the end of a business strategy. So you're going to tell me real quick, like in uh, yeah. good detail about this 12-point plan. But before we yeah. get into that, yeah. I would like you to let me know. As someone who doesn't have a business strategy or as mm -hmm. a business without a business strategy, what do I stand to lose? Uh, just in the mirror side or the flip side of what I talked about, the advantages. If you are unable to put a business strategy in place, then what it means you could have inefficiencies in your production. Mm -hmm. It could mean you do not have the right culture for the people that are working for you. It could mean uh, you're not concerned about the profits. You probably you're just there existing and the profits are not so much. It could mean that you do not have a technology opti optimization. So you do not do your research well in terms of uh, which technology to use, mm -hmm. to use the, which ERP to use in your industry, in the hotel industry, uh, because it varies from industry to industry what technology to actually, to actually use. Uh, then you could have uh, probably unsatisfied customers because one of the strategies could actually be customer satisfaction. Mm -hmm. So if you are unable to follow through a business strategy, then you could have a downside, uh, a flip side uh, from, from the advantages that I was talking about. They would now be eating into you. And of course, that means you may not be able to uh, survive for, for long. Right. Yeah, you, you could just be out of business almost any other time. Yeah. Now let's talk about the 12-point plan. Okay. When we talk about a business strategy, what are the components? What has to be in there? What can't miss in a successful or an effective business strategy? Uh, that's a very good question. And I think most of the people, uh, they have the idea. Because once you conceptualize the idea, mm -hmm. you are 50% done. But then how do you actuate it? Uh, you may need an expert or you yourself, if you're equipped to do that, then probably you could do it. But the first stage is actually to have the birth of that idea. Right. So that in itself, you're halfway done. Mm -hmm. So for you to be able to have this, you must keep in mind what I was talking about. They must be smart. Okay? Uh, but then now to have it from a 12-point plan that we normally do, first of all, you have an executive summary mm -hmm. that is able to actually um, get the stakeholders to know what you're really talking about. Uh, it could be the investors, it could be the staff, right. or even uh, fellow directors that, that actually work with you. So you must have an executive summary that is able to actually uh, lay out, mm -hmm. uh, bear, like what, what are you really looking for. Right. Uh, then you have uh, a business case that you present. Fine, I want to do this strategy. I want to actually uh, make my processes more efficient. But then this is a business case because the trending uh, environment is that by the next five years, we could not be having uh, petroleum-run vehicles. 
we are going to more into electricity run vehicles or even um, water as in, as in some cases of innovation so you need to have a business case that will actually justify what you're talking about to investors then the next uh, the third one would be the mission and vision that this is a mission that i want to actually this is the vision i want to achieve right. uh, while uh, doing this strategy but then these are the missions that I'm going to actually uh, work with them on a daily basis. Most people actually don't understand the difference between a mission and a vision. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'll give an example. <laughs> so you, you may have a vision to go to Mombasa for right. holiday. But then you need to have a mission to actually be saving 5,000 right. shillings a right. month. Right. So mi vision is more, uh, is more further mm -hmm. f stretched. And then mission is what, uh, how you get there, how, you get there. Mm. how the steps that you actually get, uh, do to actually get to that vision. Then you have the fourth one as being the SWOT. Of course, the SWOT we know is about the strength. Right. You evaluate the strength mm -hmm. of uh, that strategy you're talking about. The weaknesses that is going to uh, come about with it, the opportunities that are bound for you to be able to actuate that particular strategy, then of course the threats that are there. Is it uh, is there an institutional uh, change like policy change by the government? Is there a paradigm shift in terms of the customer uh, expectations? Mm -hmm. So that will fall within the SWOT analysis where yeah. you actually analyze it in detail. Then of course you go to the goals where you now say this is a strategy yes but then what do i need to achieve which are, what is my end result that i want to achieve so what are your goals mm. of course uh, then this one you have to put again in detail uh, if it's customer satisfaction if it's product efficiency you put them in detail uh, then you have to see these goals that i'm talking about what will make me know that i'm actually in the headed in the right direction so you the other point is uh, key performance indicators right. that must be able to uh, stand out to know that you're actually going to your desired goal. So it could be that probably now you're getting more traction in terms of uh, website viewership. It could be that now more customers are visiting your mm -hmm. hospital. Uh, it could be that probably more of that product is moving from the shelf. So it means you, those are key performance indicators that actually mean you are headed towards your eventual goal of actually attaining that strategy. Yeah. Uh, then you have, uh, the other one is uh, the target group or item. I say group because it could be people, item it could be an object that probably you now want to, an item let's say like uh, I want to have the best uh, vehicle model. Uh, must it be looking like this? The design should be sharp, should be like, like this. Okay, of course, I'm saying that being a man. Yeah. <laughs> but then for, for probably uh, ladies could be the cosmetics, mm. yeah, that you want it to have a certain kind wow. of yeah, <laughs> uh, smell, aroma, you know, all those things. Uh, but then t uh, target group still within the same is that probably you may want to uh, better your staff in terms of um, how they, they, they culture themselves, mm. cult in terms of culture, organization culture. So then that one would be able to inform uh, that you, you study your tar target group or item. You study it, that you see it's here. What do I need to do? Or is it at a point where I can be able to now meet my desired right. strategy in its current state? Or whatever I want to achieve, if it's probably even farming, uh, the probably the quality that I'm needed to produce mm. uh, in, the, in the end, if it's, uh, let's say, barley, is my wheat of, of, of that quality. So you look at it, uh, you, you, you look at that target item or, or group that you analyze it to find uh, whether it is able to, to align itself with the strategy. Then the other one would be the industry analysis, you mm -hmm. benchmark. Okay. So you figure out that, okay, this is what I want to do. Has there anyone done this before? Uh, is it uh, a nuance in the industry? Is it uh, something that probably... So it's like market research. Market really? research, okay. yes, which falls under that. Okay. And you're able to know now this is what is happening or not happening and this is how I'm coming in. Then you have the other one, as much as you're seeing the, pe the peers are doing it, what is the edge that you are going to have? What is the competitive edge that you're going to have? Uh, there it's good to acknowledge that because then you can be able to have pointers that would say, uh, this is what my peers are doing, but then this is my competitive edge. Right. So it means uh, I'm going to be ahead of them in terms of efficiency, in terms of uh, product design, mm -hmm. in terms of, I mean, uh, product production levels. I mean, you, you look at that from, from the competitive edge uh, perspective. Right. Then there are, uh, the other one would be the process map that you come up with it. I have already this strategy. I've evaluated all these aspects. I've seen the competitive edge. But then how do I get from point A to point B? Now, this is the part where you join the dots. Mm. You put a line to it. So you started here. 
you're saying if it's uh, in most cases in businesses you have process charts mm. that will show you the process flow of how it's going to be so you start from do i it start from the collection uh, stage if it's a manufacturing company it goes into a conveyor belt where it's analyzed its it's analyzed its quality then it goes into i mean the whole of that right, chain right, right. so then you you have to identify that process value chain uh, figuratively and also in terms of written uh, written uh, paperwork mm. uh, then after that now you now uh, interrogate yourself in terms of operationalizing it fine I have this process map that I need this system to get to um, uh, probably produce this number of goods uh, do this system I have what is it uh, is it uh, efficient is it uh, something that can break down the other day so there's an the aspect of operation that comes in into the nitty-gritties of the of the process flow or the process chart. Do I have the staff that are actually able to, to scale up to this kind of production process? Are they skilled enough? Uh, do I have probably the, uh, enough amount of energy to actually be able to uh, actuate that whole process chain in the, in the manufacture? Do I need to up the grid? Do I need to have batteries, backup system? Then also there's an aspect of HR where it, comes, it falls within that operation, okay. operation process, where you now ask yourself those HR issues mm -hmm. that come along with it, that of course relate to people. Uh, there's the resources that you're talking about, there's technology. Uh, then the last part of it, which is very important, is actually the financial uh, aspect of it. Whichever strategy that you want to run, there has to be uh, an eventual goal that would lead to a financial gain, mm -hmm. because that's why business are in business. So you must, it must make sense, both in terms of sense, sense, and sense with a C, mm. okay? <laughs> that you have the coin down the line. Right. So that way now you have uh, things to, uh, to do with the return on investment, that you're able to check, uh, is this strategy, even if I do it, will it be able to now gain me traction in terms of the profits that I'm looking for? What is my payback period? Am I able to recoup from what I've put in? Mm -hmm. Uh, what am I looking at in terms of P&L projections? Um, will my profits look like this? Will I have an aspect of losses before I start making profits? Uh, what time will it take for me to actually get to, to the end of the roadmap? Then, of course, sometimes people use the break-in even analysis, mm -hmm. which is, again, uh, some uh, financial model that you're able to now know. Uh, once I break even, now from here onwards, I'm actually making profits. Uh, then that way you can be able to quantify a business strategy from a point that uh, my business uh, my break even point shall be probably after one year then is it justifiable to even start in the first place mm -hmm. uh, there is the other model of looking at ca cash flow projections will the projections actually make sense when i'm looking at that strategy even if i'm doing the efi uh, an efficient production of the of the goods and services uh, at the end of it will the cash flow make sense am I investing in something that will bring me more right. profits at right. the end of it? So that should be the 12-point 12, 12 plan that you, you actually look at when you're looking at the business strategy. So basically, yes. the 12-point plan is yeah. everything, the 12 steps that have to be incorporated in every successful or rather efficient business plan. Yes. Thank you very much for yes. coming on the show, mm. Kevin. Okay. I'm so sure there are so many entrepreneurs or business owners out there who are running businesses without... A business strategy and wondering what was going wrong it's probably because they didn't really have a proper vision. they're planning Thank to you. fail <laughs> <laughs> planning to fail yeah. thank you very much for thank coming so on the much. show and we really look forward to having you on future shows to come you're okay. a great resource so i've come to the tail end of the show but before i go as usual i'll leave you with a financial tip whenever you set off across new territory you'll want to consult a map otherwise you'll get lost Stepping forward into the unknown is what businesses do on a regular basis. What do they need to make sure that they don't get lost? A strategy, of course, which some may also call a roadmap. Whether you're looking to set up a new business, whether you're looking to set up new business priorities, outline plans for growth, determine a product roadmap, or plan your investment decisions, you'll need a strategy. And that's where I'll wrap it up for tonight on Eye on the Money. Do keep the conversation going on our social media pages at Metropole TV KE on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I'm Ingrid Nantege. Have a very beautiful evening. <laughs>